<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesday. So we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux. I'm Vince Stone, joined every week by Joe Bryant and Pedro Mateus, mm-hmm. uh, Pedro yeah. Pauti Mateus. That's, uh, I, I want you, I'm going to go ahead and give you a warning. Uh, we do a show on Saturdays, Linux <laughs> Eastcast Weekly, where I, I, I do this mm-hmm. shot when I open up the show. And I, I have Jordan up there and Pedro's down there just chilling out. They're being nice and all that. And I, I keep seeing them making faces in the background when I'm trying to be all super serial with my uh, intro. So now I'm going to be yes. doing Zoom and enhance it on both of you. So there's your fair warning. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Also, I would like to point out that with DaVinci Resolve has a Facetune enhancement. I can put makeup uh-huh. on you. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Just so you know. <laughs> but, hey, before we get started, we do like to see what's going on in each other's lives, man, because I've been doing a lot of stuff. If you tuned in last night, uh, there was a big warning after Pedro's mm-hmm. beautiful stream of uh, perpetual darkness, uh, <laughs> dual wielding uh, rolling pins. I'm not kidding. This is all things that factually took place. <laughs> inside of the game there's link but after that stream i'm doing a little proof of concept testing because i, I Peter, remember when i was like hey man uh you know years and years ago last saturday well, yeah last wednesday too um <laughs> like you know what let's do this right what i'm going to try to get in place is just get get rid of some of the nightmare spaghetti that i have in the studio and like 15 ethernet cables and this all happens everything's fine until you have to replace one but i want to tighten down the timings and for audio return, all that stuff, and just move it over to just get everything on 10 gigabit, get rid of some of this nonsense in the rack. So I've been playing around with that. And I thought, let's just get new stuff with warranties and all that lasted, that lasted after saying it Saturday, right up until Sunday evening. I was like, I I can't do that. That goes against me. I'm like, I don't like that. That's not the spirit in which I like to put things together. So I went to eBay and I found Short story, a little bit longer is uh, I got some twelve dollar ten gig NICs, uh fiber NICs from Solar Flare that I'm going to be testing out. And they're like twelve dollars a piece. Worst case scenario, we're going to get a video. I'm like, well, that didn't work. Pfft, and throw it in the fire and <laughs> stay tuned for that. Uh, still got still got to talk myself into buying the uh, eight port ten gig switch, which is like way cheaper than getting it with copper. If anyone's like, well, why don't you just use ten gig RJ forty five? Lots of reasons, kids. Uh, one thing I do want to mention, uh, Jeff Chris, he was the guy responsible for getting ToeJam and Earl back in the groove Yay. over to Linux, developing mm-hmm. that. And um, he was uh, good friends with the creator of ToeJam and Earl and through the Kickstarter project and getting it on Steam and all that. He came and talked with us. So if you were curious about some of the backstory and how that all rolled out, go check out the interview we had. On Linux Gamecast Weekly. That's available podcast. It's on YouTube. Head over to LinuxGameCast.com and you'll find it, watch it, listen to it. And we're going to be doing a lot more of this in 2021. I'm dialing in. Right now, everyone who wants to come on the show, pretty much going to be like, hey, come on, test subject. I mean, would love to talk to you <laughs> while I'm getting things <laughs> dialed in. But I did notice um, everyone's favorite Mateus, the real Pedro Mateus. Has a solder guy and he's determined to learn how to use it. And I love seeing this and you've not burnt yourself enough. <laughs> uh, I've already felt exactly what 320 Celsius uh, feels like on my skin. Thankfully, uh, I heal fast. So there are no scars. But yeah, no, my uh, my right hand has felt the heat that comes mm. out of the pine sill. And uh, that this... For $25, if you want to learn how to solder and you don't want to have to worry about, you know, your iron not getting hot enough, get one of them. Seriously. Th- these are amazing. And, well, uh, there, I have a lot of meetings at work, which are completely useless. So I do other things like... But, uh, hang on, <laughs> putting I mean, like, teeny tiny little yourself kids out together. publicly. Yes. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I told my boss, it's like, we have way too many meetings and most of them are useless. So, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I've been putting random, uh, <laughs> yeah, random um, kits off eBay together uh, while listening to what people are saying. Well, listening. Uh, but <laughs> okay. I can't dig my grave any deeper. Well, one of the things that you, what you just hold up for the other listeners, so hold that up again. That's a digital clock right just a led yep. five volt 
So do you think five volts? A, uh, it's powered off of USB. There's right. a button battery for the real time uh, chip because it has a real time chip in there. Uh, button cell right there, and it's got a beeper too for the alarm function. <laughs> that looks pretty nice. Do you think you could adapt a battery pack to that and hop on the tube? Mm. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, this one doesn't have a case. This one would not go past. <laughs> but it, yeah. I, I'm not even bringing the TSA into this. It, well, even the, like this UK Air Force security. You definitely want to yeah. always factor in <laughs> safety, no matter who you are, your TSA acceptance factor before going out in public with homebrew stuff. Period. Yes. Doesn't matter who you are, man. Jill, what's Aww. new with you? Ah. Uh, uh, Pedro, uh, Steve Husband says, make a theremin and play it on the show. <laughs> that would be fun. <laughs> <laughs> they have a kit for that on eBay? I might. <laughs> there we go. Yes. <laughs> so uh, I finally figured out where I'm going to store all my hardware from my computer room, my studio, so I can paint the room and bring in new racks and cabinets. And so it's all temporarily going to go in the living room. <laughs> Because that's the way I got to do it. <laughs> I, I like yeah. how you set that up. You're like, yeah, you know, we've done some careful planning and, you know, yeah. so stret- no, we're just moving in the living room. Man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's because I use this as, as you know, my podcasting studio, I can't do it all at once. I've got to do, do it corner at a time. Come on, and, Joe, you got three days to do it. And you got to do what I do. I'm like, all right, I got three days to do this. Let's do it. <laughs> I can't do it. It gets that. fun around, you know, day two without any sleep. And you're like, oh, I can still pull this off. I'm young. And like, I'm not young anymore. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's a thing. And um, yeah, so we decided actually we're going to take the piano out of the living room. <laughs> so it takes up a lot of space. So <laughs> where are you going to put the piano? We're actually going to donate it. We have okay. um, we have keyboards, so we don't. And and. Yeah, we don't need the piano. I don't play it. Steven does occasionally, but we do have have keyboards, so. <laughs> don't worry, Steven. You can keep your fan over the opera mask and uh, I won't judge you, man. Yeah. But Ubuntu has decided to do something well, canonical, I should say. They should, they've decided yeah. to do something with Ubuntu that uh, I've been waiting mm-hmm. for, and that is to ship Wayland by default in 2104. And all I'm going to say for Jill Texas over is don't you dare back down from this one. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so yeah, like Ven was saying, um, this a version a version of Ubuntu 21.04 hair suit hippo may be really hairy after all. <laughs> so yes, they're gonna be including the the Wayland display server by default now. And this is a long time coming. I mean, they had started it back in 1710. So Ubuntu 1710. So I'm I'm happy that they're, you know, trying to to make it default now. Although um uh if you have an NVIDIA GPU, um it'll default to Xorg until uh they have worked out issues with the NVIDIA drivers. <laughs> so <laughs> that's definitely uh, a good thing. So if you're on AMD or Intel, um, you will have Wayland by default. And you can actually test out Wayland now by logging out to the login screen in Ubuntu. Click the cog and select the Ubuntu on Wayland session and then log in as normal. And you can easily switch back to Xorg from the login screen as well. And I I actually noticed this like a version ago of Ubuntu that that was in there. So I I never played around with it, but I did no, notice it was there. <laughs> Pedro, I want you to tell me, man, what do anti earthers and flat vaxxers have in common? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, they hate Wayland. Uh, really. <laughs> uh, we, we did that. Somebody was a little upset about this, uh, like genuinely. Oh, I, I'm telling you, man. Uh, Drew Devolt walked out. And he's like, "Yo, let me tell you about Big X and how it's trying to hold down the man." Um, <laughs> he had a little blog post there'll be a link to all of this in our show notes but apparently yeah. uh, there is a cabal that is anti Whalen and they, they've been keeping it down and it's bad or something I don't know I read this I read through that and I understand you know it's okay you gotta vent about stuff I get it you know I know mm-hmm. yeah, but I'm also gonna roll back and go you gotta step outside of your bubble 
for your own like sanity, mm-hmm. because even among people who are just running Linux day in, day out, they don't know what Wayland is. There's there's no like collective hate group for Wayland. They don't they <laughs> they log in and it logs in and they do the things on the desktop and they log out. And um, there's some still I mean. This needs to happen. It's got to be good. It's going to be a fantastic opportunity to hammer on pipe wire, which mm-hmm. uh, I think that that it's going to make me like super happy. That's worth it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I've said this. I don't know if I've said it on this show, but I know definitely said it on Saturday. You know, NVIDIA is going to be including patch sets needed uh, to get Wayland up and running on there, and which is good. But that's also going to be, you know, the one thing I've seen is like, oh, you've just bought the wrong video card and you can't use Wayland. Ha ha, you need to go buy AMD. That doesn't work when you're in the midst of a pandemic and video cards are just not available. That's no longer a valid excuse. Get wrecked. Uh, B, <laughs> but the discrete GPU market, NVIDIA is 80%. Get wrecked, the sequel, more reckoning. Um, so once that gets rolled out, we're going to see adoption grow. That's fantastic. But that is going to expose, uh, because I know NVIDIA has been the poster child for, yep, that's, that's the problem with Wayland right there. It's all NVIDIA's fault. I'm oversimplifying mm-hmm. spamming the emails. <laughs> but that's not necessarily going to be the case. But yeah, I'm, I'm happy for this. Again, Canonical, stick with this, please. It's not yes. going to be pretty. People are going to complain. But just shrug emoji. Yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> they also complained about Pulse Audio. It's, they still mm. do to this day, but you don't hear that a lot. <laughs> don't, don't bring in arguments where people have valid points, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's the thing. There are some valid uh, points uh, to, uh, you know, maybe give Strider a bit of a voice now that mm. he doesn't uh, host the show anymore. <laughs> the, um, the, there, there needs to, this needs to happen and uh, not yeah. just for getting people to get comfortable with Wayland and kicking the tires, so to speak, but to actually put it in front of people and make people realize it doesn't have feature parity with X. It does certain things that X cannot do because that's what it was made to do. Uh, but it needs to at least be able to do most of the same stuff. And right now stuff like X set there's nothing like that for Wayland. So we need that. The average desktop <laughs> user, I don't think is going to um, really notice thing. All the, all the big burry edges have been filed off to the point. Yeah, you are going to run into mm-hmm. things like VR. I'm like, mm, but then again, VR on anywhere. It's like, that's still an edge case. Uh, I will say <laughs> what we do here in the studio, not possible yet with Wayland. And don't come at me and say it is because I know it's not. <laughs> yeah. uh, this is something I follow. And that's not hating on Wayland. I'm saying we need more adoption. We need more people playing with it, more people hammering on it. And at the end of the day, the average person doesn't. Th- there's no war there. There's no, I'm not ever using This is not system D. Okay. It's not. Yeah. <laughs> so don't worry about it. We got a birthday to celebrate now. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yay! It Yay! was. I believe um, February 1st. Was that a Tuesday? It seems like that might have been a t- no, might have been a Monday, right? Monday. M- Monday. Yeah. February mm-hmm. 1st. A little traffic cone snuck into people's lives and made playing Yay. video infinitely better, man. It was. Because before that, you got to think about it. And this is from Video Land. They kind of walked through it. It'll be in the blog in the show notes. It was a dark time, man. Like, back in the mm-hmm. day, you... 20 years ago, you needed separate applications to view media. We're talking like real player, QuickTime, Windows Media, and whatever the heck was decoding your DVDs that week. VLC kind of sort of did them all. Initially, you know, there was some growing pains and all that. I'm not saying it was smooth sailing or anything like that, but, you know, having one media player to rule them all made tons of sense. And today it's just expected. And over the years, you know, things kept getting bigger and better. And now VLC can handle pretty much anything. It's like the Swiss Army chainsaw of video players. And that's why in 2021, I'm proud to tell everyone I use MPV. But <laughs> yes, <laughs> I mostly use M player. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, so this is really, really exciting. We love VLC, actually. This is, this is so cool because, uh, you know, for years I've had my students using it <laughs> at work. So um, this. 
you know, it's it's so amazing because this is, you know, really the cross-platform media powerhouse that streams and codes, decodes, and save millions of people, in, including me and my students from years ago, from having to use Windows Media Player <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> to play their animations. So the yeah this is this is huge and i've been using it for years uh to uh you know uh transcode uh to other formats other video formats yes Great. it totally um <laughs> doesn't rip dvds or allow you to keep personal copies of yeah. that stuff no sir uh, <laughs> but uh no it is uh very much still my go-to uh <laughs> especially when Ven already mentioned mpv yeah when mpv occasionally you throw a certain file at it and it poops the bed yeah uh, so and then i throw it in vlc and it works fine in vlc it's like dang it Mm. All right, fine. <laughs> now, if we want to get back to edge cases, here's the reason I don't currently use VLC is on this box particularly, I should say in the studio, is simply because with Jack, when it spawns the sync, it destroys the sync for the next song. Mm. That doesn't work. That doesn't make logical <laughs> sense ever, period, because auto connect's going to try to connect to the first two inputs on whatever your source is and I got seven of them and it tries to connect to the first two. I'm like, well, that's smart, but there's seven and it's nine and 10. So if you fix that, maybe, I don't know. I use all player, man, because I'm a hipster. That's right. <laughs> oh, I love that one too. <laughs> and you know what? Katana Steel is exactly right in chat. That's This is one of the, the big, amazing things about VLC. It was really, it works really great with corrupted or partial files. And sometimes I'd have, um, Inevitably, when you're rendering long animations, sometimes they would get corrupt and my students could play them on VLC. <laughs> so now, that was a thing. <laughs> you should take a look towards the future. I, I was digging around looking at some of the future <laughs> UI of VLC. That's pretty slick. I, I know people are going to be like, oh, change it. They better have like a, like a little. A little. <laughs> I hate it because it's different. I'm just saying <laughs> it, you, you need play it right on the nose too. Mm-hmm. put a fixie icon, put a fixie or like a can of PBR. Or they can click on it and go back to the old one, but the new one's completely borderless. <laughs> and it just mm-hmm. pulls up and it's got display information there. And it looks very slick. I'd, I'd be excited to play around with that on my new tuxedo computer. Oh, yes. Ooh, so uh, tuxedo have uh, uh, them along with System76 have been very much leading the uh, Ryzen Linux uh, laptop race. And it's kind of strange now that like uh, AMD's made the processors available. People are making yeah. systems for them. <laughs> Uh, now that the Ryzen 4000 processors and the 5000 mobile processors are not, you know, just unicorns, the desktop variants, yeah, no, forget them. But the, on the laptops, as it turns out, they are uh, becoming more and more available. And this one is the uh, Tuxedo Pulse 15. Also, this is which, cheating because mm-hmm. I was about to rate you on your Photoshop screenshot. It's cheating <laughs> yeah. when you render the entire laptop. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It looks like it fits because everything is rendered. Uh, but yeah, it is uh, a very good render. And that is what that uh, particular laptop looks like. It is as thin and light as a 15.6 inch laptop can go while still packing an eight core 16 thread APU that um, goes all the way up to 4.2 gigahertz on that slim of a body so yeah that's that's very nice that looks uh very nice and i went down and i spec'd out uh, like my configuration with the ryzen 7 uh, 4800h and the uh two sticks of uh ddr4 3200 um uh, eight gigs each and a 500 gig uh samsung 860 evo i think that's the one they have and that came out the total to a thousand eighty five euros that's amazing. Wait, so for, uh, wait you, you, still, you, you could still budget for a couple of the large Tux plushies. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that, that, I have one right of there. theirs. <laughs> I mean, it's uh, basically one euro per centimeter when it comes to height on those Tux plushies. So, yeah. I think it looks pretty sweet, man. Uh, the only thing, uh, you know, I was like, ah, laptops, get them away. I'm always fascinated to see what's going to happen under um, extremely high heat with a magnesium chassis. Okay, mm. maybe not. Sorry. Dead silence. Um, the, uh, he was trying to reach. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. So, so 
<laughs> this is actually a, a really beautiful Ryzen laptop. My only complaint, and this is just a very little complaint, is that it doesn't have at least a 1440 resolution screen. Everyone's using 1080 screens, and the higher quality screens are screens are, t- are 1440 up to Ultra HD. So, <laughs> but it is an IPS display, and it is beautiful. And I was really impressed with it. <laughs> I like the look of it. Um, I mean, again, it looks like a laptop, but it's nice and thin. It's reasonably priced, especially tuxedo mm-hmm. is something to look at if you're on the other yeah, side of the pond amazing. in the EU. And like, hey, look, I don't have to pay, you know, import tax and all that other fun stuff. Yeah. That goes <laughs> along with that situation. But mm-hmm. I've teased this a couple of times. Um, Amazon, you, you did this to yourself because you recommended um <laughs> Anytime I see like USB 3 capture cards or just capture cards in general, because I know people want to capture other PCs and they want to capture gaming systems and fun stuff like that. I always want to pick one up and test them out because like it or not, over the past decade, I've developed uh, a little bit of knowledge on that particular topic. And Amazon said, hey, man, check this one out for less than 20 bucks. I'm going to give you a USB 3 capture dongle that can do 1080p 60. It's going to be brilliant. Yeah. I took the Pepsi mm-hmm. challenge. And if you can yes, guess you by the uh, title there, <laughs> it starts with bogus. 1080p, 60 HDMI, 3 point nope. That's right, USB 3 point nope. Um, I tried it out. I did a teardown of it. You know, I plugged it into the Linux box. I plugged it into uh, the thread booper right here. Let's see if I can get to the teardown and give you an idea of what the issue is. This is where the camera's focusing. I love doing this. I feel like a real YouTuber um, <laughs> where I wait the autofocus <laughs> yeah. uh yeah there's only four data pins on the usb 3.0 connector uh, as opposed to your typical nine so oh boy there <laughs> is physically no way you're going to have enough um bandwidth to do your 1080p 60 unless it was doing some type of like a crazy hyper compression on the chip itself but yeah i did that Ran it through. It's been up for patrons for about like two weeks while I was just hammering things out and refining it. There's a couple of versions of the video that probably better not for the public, but they're there. And um, we got all that together, pushed it out, sent a note to uh, Amazon, sent a note to the, and that Mm -hmm. particular capture card disappeared. Oh, okay. It's no longer available for sale. So we might have accidentally did a good. We might have did a a little bit of consumer activism here in LGC. And so I'm not necessarily going to be on the prowl for other ones that are a little fishy. But if I run across one that I have questions about, um, Mm -hmm. I'll throw that in there. And then, yeah, go watch the video. It's on our web zone. It's on our YouTube. And it's about, I think it's like under eight minutes. I put it through all the tests. You know, I try it out and... The video quality of it's not bad if you don't mind that, you know, very retro 30 frames per second, because that's all <laughs> it's going to do. And I do point out in the video, I'm like, 720p, you can do that. That's not going to be a problem. 720p, 60 all day long. But that's not what it said on the marketing material. That's not what it said on the site. And that connector is nothing but USB 2 with a bad die job. All right. <laughs> Yeah, Ben. I'm skeptical of the ones from AliExpress. I was thinking of uh, trying a few of the HDMI capture cards that are under $10. See, here's the thing. Here's the thing. If I'm ordering from AliExpress, I have those expectations, though. Yes. You know, if if I'm ordering from Wish or I'm ordering from Ali, I'm looking to do a YouTube video about, look how bad these are. (laughs) This, on the other hand, was... Hey, it's just on Amazon. It's got a couple of reviews. I'm like, you know what? It's 2021. You can probably do some really crunchy, not very high quality 1080p60 for under mm-hmm. 20 bucks in 2021. <laughs> I didn't expect a straight up fraud, but hey, that's where we're at. <laughs> that's where we're at. Let's talk about the SS Titanic because nah. um, <laughs> the register, it's like it's dead, Jim. Linus yes. <laughs> marks Intel Itanium processors as orphaned. In the Linux kernel, Itanic sinks further beneath. Oh, well, we barely knew you, except for all the people who bought into it. Man, um, remember when Intel wanted to go 64-bit, like way back in the pure day? Pure 64-bit? Yeah, yes. they did. Well, <laughs> you know, hey, they wanted to catch up at pure 64-bit, like deck alphas and sun, saber, saber 2 architectures. Unfortunately, for them, I should say, AMD is like, that's a bad idea. We need 32-bit compatibility, x86, 64, instruction set came out, and, well, you know, the rest is history. 
not to be deterred, Intel kept on making the Itanix, the Itanium processors, but they finally, I think it was last year, um, they did just like final shipments and, you know, they're going to have like support for them or something like that. But you can't get them anymore. And I think reasonable enough, the, you know, Linus, the, the, the Linux was like, uh, yeah, we, we don't need to worry about that anymore, which I'm down for. A hundred percent. No love lost. Never bought one. I have no interest in collecting them. End of my story. Yeah, no. Uh, oh, all of this uh, is interesting. Oh, yeah, we've orphaned, you know, the uh, 64-bit <laughs> uh, processor, pure 64-bit processor that uh, or processor line that Intel put out. Right around the same time that uh, the whole let's kill 32-bit uh, <laughs> a conversation is happening. And yeah, no, all that talk about getting rid of 32-bit. And here we are, uh, dropping support yeah. for 64-bit. <laughs> um, Katana points out in the show notes. He's like, hey, man, I remember, you know, the lack of x86 support. In the <laughs> uh, that's why you went with AMD Optron. Oh, yeah, 100, 100% oh, yeah, 64. 100%, I remember my yeah. first uh, 64, mm-hmm. like 2003, something like that. My AMD 64, nothing worked. <laughs> <laughs> you could boot. I, I was running Fedora, I don't know, my like Core 3, whatever version of Fedora was at the time. It boot. Everything was fine right, in, right, right <laughs> up until you tried to play it immediate because all of the codecs were uh, 32-bit and we didn't have the backwards compatibility at that point. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, my, my thought on this is just imagine where we would be today if – Digital Equipment Corporation could have continued the development of their 128-bit processor and even their 256-bit processor they were planning after that with the DEC Alpha. And uh, I have one of these machines behind me that's 64-bit. And they've, you know, there has been some te- technology um, from those used in modern processors, like Katana Steel was saying um, in our show notes that uh, some of that 128-bit went into um, MMX and SSE and 3D, 3D Now, and he's exactly right. I just wish we had full 128-bit processors and 256-bit processors now because DEC developed those back in the 90s. <laughs> so... <laughs> you could just get like uh, an Atari Jaguar and there's 120 bits or something, right? And just like, tape two of them together. That's how that works. <laughs> two of them together. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, this is like interesting to look at considering we're on the sunset of the x86 instruction set as, as a whole. I know people that are incapable of looking down the road or the long picture yeah. of it. Like, no, it's not. Ben, you're shut up. You know what you're talking about. And like, give it a decade and come back to me. But what? No. Um, <laughs> it's, it's just interesting to see what, how not to do it, but Intel is leading the way. Um, yeah. <laughs> 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 what else do we have? Um, uh, oh, Libra office has got a thing, man. TNG. Yeah. This, LNG. this is, yeah. So this is really cool. Libra office has announced a Libra office new generation, which is a project they're doing to bring new and younger people to the community. And this is actually a great idea because a lot of the LibreOffice users are students at schools and colleges using free and open source software. So this totally makes sense. And so LibreOffice is is actually asking students to give feedback on what they use it for and how it can be improved and if they would like to help with outreach. So the... What's cool is the Document Foundation has already been issuing issuing open badges for community contributions, and they want to give these to the younger users to, you know, encourage development and feedback. And uh, so what's really cool is you can actually join their Telegram group and help them with ideas to get young people involved in LibreOffice. This is just wonderful. You know, they they know where their base is. So... So to draw from the base of uh, young people with new ideas, new and fresh ideas is, you know, a great idea. Yeah, and get them young because if there's mm-hmm. one thing that developers usually don't get a lot of is recognition, exposure. Yeah. I loathe to mm-hmm. use that word because people die <laughs> from exposure. But uh, the <laughs> it's a very good thing to introduce the developers to a bunch of possible new developers that are going through their formative years right now and again i don't want to use the word indoctrinate but that's kind of what you want to do because yes open (laughs) source is great 
tell them that open source is great. So yeah, no, I fully support this initiative. <laughs> Good luck with that. Um, hello, fellow kids. Uh, do, do what you got to do. I'm walking into 2021 where everyone's isolated. You need online collaborative functions out of the box, uh, preferably web-based or it might as well not exist mm-hmm. um, Very true. or the youths. So hopefully that's what's going to be brought into it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that type of looks. So you might notice uh, we do a little bit of like a WebRTC video here, just a little bit, occasionally, every now and then, sometimes <laughs> only on, you know, like Tuesdays after 4 p.m. But what we use is, J- you know, Jitsi. Uh, before that, we we used Skype before Microsoft had bought Skype when it was functional under Linux. It did all the neat things and it worked out of the box. Then Microsoft bought it and crippled it and kneecapped it and all the fun stuff and over the years, different things. Now we just use Jitsi, but we have to use all these hacks with Jitsi to make it work with our audio stack because WebRTC by default wants to do a just complete nerf job on everything. It wants to add like auto echo cancellation, high pass filters, um, just horrible, horrible, big, na- butch. I get it, you know, background rip noise, stuff that you would typically have in like if you're doing a business conference or something like that, you're just calling up your friend, you got people in the background. You want to make it sound as good as possible. But when you're trying to make it sound as good as possible on your end, all that stuff gets in your way. So we have like this long cryptic URL that we have to enter in through Jitsi to, you know, cut off all of that nonsense. And even then, like, well, it could be better if we had a higher bit rate. Wow. This <laughs> is Jack Trip WebRTC. This is using Jack, Jack Trip to tunnel through the nonsense. That is the WebRTC media stream. It's routed through the RTC data channel in order to bypass all of the encoding and buffering and delay. And it's got video. Uh, setup's real simple. You know, it's Node.js. Uh, there's even a Docker image for this so the kids can play with it. And you do need a um, SSL cert. Well, it needs a strong word, but that's always recommended. And it works. I We haven't really had a chance to hammer on it. Apparently... It's very easy to set up because I uh, issued the Pepsi challenge to our lovely co-host, Jordan Sfang, and uh, from Saturday's shows and, you know, from his uh, party time Thursday night um, shenanigans. It's like, hey, man, you set this up because, you know, he's got a box and it's all dockerized. And I'm like, yeah, all right. And I think it was like Sunday night. We, we get a message in the uh, group chat and he's like, all right, here's the URL. So we're going to play around with it. What that's going to do. Depending on how well it works, uh, better video, better latency, higher higher quality audio, infinitely higher quality audio, and uh, mm. this is going to make things really interesting. Now, what I should say is, you probably don't want to tangle with this at home unless you have like a <laughs> full uh, audio setup with a <laughs> mix minus configured for independent channels, and you got things like you know your high pass filters, noise repellents, gates, EQs, compression, and all that stuff stacked in, but you're looking to do something like we do this could be worth looking into but it's not as cool as stonks <laughs> <laughs> well chances are if you uh have been on the internet for the past two weeks you've heard about game stonks and uh how a bunch of uh Redditors managed to get a chunk of the internet to buy a bunch of gamestop stocks and they did that to try and um basically screw over uh hedge funds that were short selling the um those stocks because Pedro, I, let's I, would face li- it. I would like to uh maintain our track record of podcasters not attempting to explain short selling i'm not <laughs> good i'm not going Go to <laughs> I'm just throwing that it, out there. yeah because yeah no um again gamestop was not doing terribly well in some of their decisions uh, at the start of the pandemic did not reflect well on their stocks. So this is leading yeah. to something people, I promise. Yes, it is. <laughs> and uh, the, um, well, chances are, is. if it's you are. Ticker, turtle stock, <laughs> stock position track. <laughs> okay, you did the rest then. <laughs> <laughs> That's all there is to it, man. Come on. 
<laughs> it's a stock ticker for your terminal, Pedro Mateus. Livestock prices, track values, support multiple car spaces. This is basically a stock ticker for terminal. I thought it was neat. That's why I threw it in the show notes. But Pedro needed to get worn peace out of his system to say, hey, look, it's a stock ticker for your terminal. <laughs> okay. Well, I next think story. this is really. <laughs> <laughs> Aww, I actually think this is really cool because of you know they started using the Linux kernel because of its ability to pass messages very quickly in the financial sector and on Wall Street. So they moved from Unix to to Linux because of that reason. So having a, a stock ticker and terminal actually makes sense on our own desktops. Why not? <laughs> I just, this is a little thing. I was like, that's oh, one of those. I like, I like to throw these stories. I'm like, oh, well, I'll play with that for 10 seconds and never again. So, something that you'll never be able to use or play with ever again, unless you like order like right now while we're talking live, is the Pinephone mm. Community Editions. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes, because uh, they're they're going away. The Pines, uh, they put out a bit of an article to say that uh, they've had, clearly, the Pine phone has been very, very successful. Uh, but the community editions are going to be phased out while they start focus over the next 12 months to uh, get basically a pine f- uh, the pine phone to a platform status not just as like a dev kit which is effectively what the community editions were so while stock is available and i checked the uh, the pine store before we started uh recording and it was the plasma edition and mobian those were the last two editions that still had any stock left so yeah you if you've been curious and you have the i think it's 150 dollars to spare this is your chance otherwise you will have to wait a little bit until the actual daily driver version of the uh pine phone is available i get a serious question you have the pine book right like the big bad and like super slick and pine you've managed to yeah. like like rear naked choke that thing into a usable state you're like i you you can mm-hmm. honestly say if I wanted to I could probably use it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because it took it took some doing, and the first step was remove KDE because KDE on ARM is even worse than KDE on x eighty six sixty four. But yeah. <laughs> also, Pine, you probably don't want to use Pedro's statement. If I wanted to, I could probably use it. Don't use that marketing um. <laughs> <laughs> but you're free to uh, check this out. Uh, what's the difference with like the community additions? Because from the outside. I've looked at that and I've always looked at the Pine phone. I'm like, ah, that's it. It's even priced like silly low, you know, 140 bucks. But, and they've been very clear in all of the communications. Like this is a tinker toy. Go play with it. Like, I like tinkering. And my brain's like, we do not have time for that. But with, when it came to the community editions, the best I could ever take away from it was that just pre-shipping with X distro on it. Was there more and to the it than that? custom backplate. Oh, they had a custom yeah, backplate with each of the yeah. different versions. So then you could be like, I belong to this tribe. Do, do yeah, you, think- you could have the like the Ubuntu touch backplate oh. and be running Manjaro yeah. on it, which so. I'm pretty sure someone would no. flip if they <laughs> saw that. Imagine, imagine being out and about <laughs> and you have your Pine phone and was there a KDE edition? Yes. What, what type yeah, of that's one of the ones that's there? still available, the Plasma Mobile. Plasma and was there like a GNOME edition? Um, no, I guess the no, closest you could get to that UB would be ports. the okay. Ubuntu yeah. Touch with I am looking Unity. at the pictures now. So imagine you were walking around with your Pine phone out in the palm, like, you know, we're, we're fantasy world here multiple, for multiple reasons, right? And <laughs> you got that out and you get it, you get your Debbie and when you're talking, you see something like, I said, and they pull the Pine phone and it's like, uh, it's an Ubuntu and you're like, ah, boo. And you never <laughs> talk to that person. <laughs> so close. Star-crossed lovers in the night. And just like, oh man, no, you're <laughs> wrong. Jill, you're still waiting on oh. the tablet? Fosh, okay. Yeah, yes. <laughs> I'm still waiting on the Pine tab. So, And I do want to go pick up one of the Mobian editions, uh, community edition for $199. So I got to grab that before it's gone. <laughs> but um, on, on uh, Pine64 said on Twitter, they are currently working currently in the process of working out alternative ways for supporting all existing projects. And they said, stay tuned. And they also said, we're looking into implementing a solution to support all eligible OSs directly. So they're, they're working on a way, I think, 
um, probably with with software to help, help the install even easier than it already is. <laughs> or you heard uh, it some here way first, to, kids. The yeah. <laughs> official Pine sixty four is going to ship with Windows CE. Yeah, it wins. <laughs> <laughs> and you're not even going to get a real stylus so it's going to give you a sausage <laughs> <laughs> just wave the noodle it's in front of the screen just there smack it <laughs> until it quits working and go buy something you want uh, that's awesome uh, I understand why you're doing that I mean just kind of get focused and I think it's very important for a lot of projects yeah. like hey let, let's stick with the one that brought us to the dance and this is we want to stay mm -hmm. on this we don't want to divert away from it but they, they, they still have things like the, the dock and some other knickknacks and the type c dock and this was a great way to basically get the distro developers involved and get you know some uh, advertising going from the uh, distro because of the custom backplates and yeah it, 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 it's a very good way to do a dev kit you just give it out to a bunch of different operating system developers and say put your branding on that get stuff working and we'll sell it and I, I'd say it was massively successful for a run of what is effectively a dev kit. Massively successful. So, And at the end of the day, yeah, Brian 64 has done the most <laughs> difficult thing and pretty much reliably, including their extra large uh, battery stickers that uh, recent shipments are getting. I like that. But uh, they've shipped hardware multiple times. Yay. <laughs> which that is the most difficult part of everything. It's not the funding. It's not, you know, the prototyping. It's mass production and shipping. And they've shown mm -hmm. that they can do that. Good on Absolutely. Them. So, Jill, we got to thank some people. We got some people that yeah. like our show. They went over to Patreon.com and they're like, hey, man, I want to <laughs> add some dollar bills to this relationship. And we thank each and every one of you who haven't picked a little level. I mean, we're saying, hey, you got, uh, you know, 16 quarters a week laying around a little extra jingle jingle. We have a bunch of stuff back up to and including access to our Discord, a special show each and every week. And uh, Discord, I can't stress this enough. You're talking about a room of people mm -hmm. that dare you to ask them a question about Linux that they mm -hmm. can't answer. That, <laughs> my favorite thing to watch is, especially when it's somebody <laughs> new, to drop it. I'm like, oh, there's blood in the water. Let's just Aww. see how long everyone jumps on that and not breaks it down. And I play too. I'm actually in the Discord. So is Pedro. So is Joe. We're in there. Mm -hmm. That's our Slack for the show. We have two rooms. For the live show, it's always open for IRC and it's for Twitch. We got a uh, chatbot, which empty it was awesome to stick and all that together. But uh, that's how we finance everything. Uh, that gives us a budget and a plan. And we do appreciate you for being able mm -hmm. to help us out. If you can, if you can't, that's cool to judge. Share the show, something like that. Just show up, leave a comment, uh, smash that. What, what does YouTube have? Thumbs? Uh, yes. Well, Thumbs they have the bell too. <laughs> the bell. Yeah. After yeah, you smash, subscribe, hit the smash bell. Smash that bell, fam. Like smash, our Darren says in chat. One of those until it quits screaming. <laughs> I don't know exactly how that works. Yeah. But uh, and, two of our beautiful party patrons have decided yeah. to increase their pledge. They yeah. like us so much. Either that or they're under some type of duress. <laughs> yes. So Dodger increased his pledge as well as Zeno, and Zeno is new. So that and he, thank you for increasing your pledge, and uh, that just uh, it just that? makes us feel so good. That was me. That was my work phone. <laughs> That's not supposed to go off at this time. <laughs> so either someone's watching the show, or someone couldn't wait till tomorrow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Everyone to keep being awesome. Okay, that can wait. We very <laughs> yeah. much appreciate that. Also, uh, if you're a patron, I posted a thing up earlier for the, the show notes. We do, we have active, we have live living document show notes each and every week. And I do a roll call because it's manual. I don't have like an automated system to do it. If you want to get access to those, there's a post currently on our patron page. It just leaves like, hey, give me. If you can read it, you have access to it. And those go out on Mondays and Wednesdays for this show and LGC weekly. Now, we also have things for like the studio. You see these blinking names that are difficult to read. That's if you get anything off of our wish zone, which I need to put mm -hmm. something in our wish zone for uh, like a shame bell. Cause that would have been great <laughs> to have right there. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. <laughs> <laughs> It already we could have, bell -like we could have, uh, we oh, could have an animation nope. of Frank dinging the bell. But. I need a full <laughs> I'm surrounded by plate glass, monitors, and more glass, so it would only be right to have a bell for the end. <laughs> the bell would come off and yeah. everywhere it would go it would break something fantastic. Uh, yeah, that's how you end up with your name on the wall. Uh, you could send a little message, but uh, 
it's boring network stuff on there right now. I don't think there's anything that'd be like, oh, that'd be fun. Also, Pedro and Jill have a, uh, mm-hmm. Jill's got a little wish zone. That, now I make them read stuff too. You're getting, you're getting value out of this. <laughs> so if you send a note, Jill's got a bunch of plushy <laughs> stuff. It's probably pink and probably 20% of the stuff on her list blinks. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Pedro, I haven't creeped on Pedro's list in a little while. Are you getting anything, uh, uh, It's been, uh, I've been slowly going through everything before I start adding more stuff. So it's basically just the expensive items now. So I wouldn't recommend <laughs> yeah. going to mine. <laughs> also, uh, I'm going to give Aldi a said, not of that, because Aldi is, is getting he's like, is that something you plan on buying immediately? I'm like, yeah, don't worry about it. Because if you look at the studio wish list, yeah. sometimes it can just be entertaining. Um, you'll see me going, breaking down through the process of like, okay, this, this is what I want. What's the cheapest way to get to that? And start working it back. Also, uh, on the web zone, I put together a itemized list of everything in the studio. And so I'm like, hey, what's that thing? It's there. Mm-hmm. That's just the link I'm going to send you if you ask. You're like, hey, what's that thing? Here's the list. It's on the web zone. Uh, go to the about segment. It is there now i wouldn't eat that that doesn't look right that, mm. that looks slightly diseased that's oh. some dark pepperoni <laughs> might be chorizo <laughs> it's, it's, it oh yeah nice. <laughs> yeah Here's i think problem. you're right pedro I chorizo have with this, pedro. <laughs> that does look like some burnt pe- pepperoni which i would expect on this slice of pie that the mm. crust to have a bit more burning to it so <laughs> <laughs> yes, the, yeah. that, that's a very um, pale looking crust. It is. Maybe it's a yeah, vampire. Yeah, it looks very thin. It looks classic uh, <laughs> pizza thin. <laughs> so we have one little thing we want to talk about because I, I saw this pop up on Twitter as I, I am totally not uh, like scrambling to get the uh, URL. I'm not filling time to do that, kids. Why would you accuse me of that? Uh, here it is. We've talked about the Pico Pie which is like the little tiny micro. This is basically an embedded controller that Raspberry Pi made. And they're like four bucks. They're made to, uh, you, you need some LEDs that need to blink. We can do it. Well, 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 well. Um, ben, ben was having none of that. He has created a NES simulator using the new Itsy Bitsy $4 Pi because he can. This is a testament to the arrogance of humankind, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. See, this is this is the first step to what I said I wanted last week when we talked about it. The handheld mm-hmm. version? Yeah, this is step one. This is getting, you know, a, the most emulated system in the world to work. This, thing, is. this thing's so small, you could put it in, like, <laughs> eyewear, man. Um, <laughs> I don't want eyewear. I want uh, <laughs> make it fit like, you know, the Game Boy Micros, the teeny tiny ones. Make it fit inside one of them. That, yeah. It's not even running it at full speed. And yes, this thing is bit banging the VGA out on it. And so, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it is. Let's see. What is it doing? Um, yeah, it's emulating 6502, all the uh, Nessar with PPU, APU, and um, yeah, the VGA signals and PWM audio. So, and guys, like, hey, it's got some glitches, but deal with it. D- d- early, very early days. And considering it came out, what? Two weeks ago, right? That's impressive. Yeah, it's amazing. That, that that's impressive for a brand new architecture, <laughs> sort of. Ish. I I'm a huge fan of things doing things they're not really intended to do, and that 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 just turned yeah four dollar nuts. You know what? The other part was like, well, I would hope you would be able to emulate thirty year old hardware. <laughs> Point taken, but it's still cool. <laughs> Right. Yeah, a four dollar ness. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's a better love story than a twenty dollar HDMI encoder. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so true. A lot more functional. <laughs> it is. So if you want to get in, if you want to get in contact with us and be like Vin, you're a monster. Pedro was about to tell us the most in depth explanation of a terminal stock ticker, and you need to shut up, uh, Vin. Yes, and I was going to make the. <laughs> Comparison between how Linux users like to root for the underdog, but whatever. Um, the if you'd like to get in touch with us and uh, point out that we're the underdog, despite you know being one of the very few uh, groups of people who actually do this on the internet, we need more. I like to imagine uh, especially that for other that, people do it. Yeah, okay, here's the thing. Um, <laughs> especially for that show on Saturday, yeah. we do actually need some competition for that. So because uh, that's what happens when we don't have any competition. But yeah, Linux game cast.com hit the contact button fill out the form make sure you 
let us know exactly what it is that we can improve for feedback is what we're looking for if you pick LWDW. If you want to send some hate mail, pick LGC Weekly. That's uh, that's where it needs to go. <laughs> and most importantly, I need test subjects. So if you'd like to come party with us on this show or Saturday night, man, if you or your team would like to appear on Linux Gamecast Weekly or Weekly Daily, Wednesdays, open source, closed source, you name it, long as it knows how to Linux... We'd like to talk to you. <laughs> now, you will need a face and the ability to uh, vibrate air molecules in order to uh, <laughs> communicate with us successfully. That's that's the only requirement I have, possibly some headsets, but definitely. Let's talk. There's a uh, topic just for that, and we don't need a bunch of hyperlinks. We just need like, hey, this is my project. I know how to Google. I swear these, and uh, we'll be in touch. Sound like a plan? Yeah, it does. Yeah. <laughs> a door six. What is a door, Pedro? Yes. Tell us all about it. I no. <laughs> I'm just going to read what Doug uh, said because he was very, very thankful to you. So he says, "Great work on the Ardor Six build instructions. Saved me a ton of time. I really appreciate it. For what it's worth, uh, this build went on a pop underscore OS sixty four. I thought pop only had sixty four bit versions of the OS. Yeah, Pedro, because we we're never going to get pop one twenty eight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or 256. <laughs> we need that x86 128 processor. <laughs> like, <laughs> pronto. <laughs> I'm thinking about, uh, th okay, Doug, I threw this in legitimate A, because you used the contact form. Big kudos on that. B, you answered something I didn't have an answer to because I built a guide for Outdoor 6. Outdoor 6 came out. And if you're unfamiliar with your distro, might not be, sh it's probably shipping on door five, maybe on door six, but you want to build it yourself, especially if you want to keep up to date with nightlies and, you know, different features and like that. 100% much as I love the project, there is little to no ha backslash cryptic build instructions to the point where somebody needs to write legitimate build instructions of how to build a release version and not the debug version. So I did that. I'm like, you know what? This works on Debian and I will bet you about Trivity. It'll work on Ubuntu's, which I know it does. I didn't know whether or not it'll work on Pop! OS, and apparently it does. So you've answered that question. Thank you, and have fun making awesome mm -hmm. music. And uh, we're doing shows like we do. Now, man, Stephen, you're on it. It's not like you watched the video <laughs> yesterday. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll take this one, Ben, right. for you. So USB 3... In as much as the plug fits, but no more, question mark, USB 3 standards body allowed this to happen by saying that USB 3 will allow high speed, which is actually USB 2, and super speed, which is real USB 3, so manufacturers can weasel their way around it. <laughs> so, yes. Yes. Um, as I alluded to in the video, now, admittedly, I was just guessing in the video because uh, when we're talking about the HD, if you just skip to the email section now roll it back to the hdmi it's going to be in the timestamps it was you know a usb it was blue and it only had four pins on it like no i not i just had to assume like there's got to be some weasel spec <laughs> language to where you can get away with this and okay there is you know super speed uh, which is real usb and so i guess that's one way around it it still can't do it in an ap60 which is what it said which i also have this, mm -hmm. You might get up something like, oh, geez, Ben, why are you opening, always opening these videos with like where you bought it? That one saved me, kids, because I got <laughs> proof that it was there as opposed to, yes, it was totally there. And now they pulled it. I'm like, yeah, go back and I get screenshots. So, yeah, yeah avoid <laughs> that one. I think that's it. Uh, yeah, U USB, uh, Mr. Alert, Alan is not getting any better with confusing. You think USB, <laughs> we, we can have a full two minute discussion on just on USB three. We hadn't even touched USB C now, have we? Which we will yeah. because we gotta get out of here <laughs> and roll some credits, beautiful people. Yay. <laughs> I got a Aww. USB C 3.2 Gen <laughs> 2 point one that would like a word with you. Yeah. <laughs> Is it uh type A? No 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 C. <laughs> <I'm watching. laughs> Uh, it's uh, Gen um, 2.1 by can 4. It, can, can it charge while uh, DisplayPort's active? Ooh. I 
think so, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's been available since Gen, uh, since uh, 3.1. How do, but how I'm do, not sure. How do I distinguish <laughs> it from my charging cable? Uh, you look at it. Aw, <laughs> <don't You> <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Alert says my favorite USB three connector is Type B. I, I like that one too. <laughs> uh, I don't have bye the T-Brown Memorial mic in it anymore. So. <laughs> <laughs>